I am obsessed with how, especially the announcers, like they always say a weird statement that's almost sort of a joke, but isn't really. And then they follow it up with, okay, wow. <laughs> you know, or it's like, a, right. okay. No. <laughs> but, From the country um, of Mario Kart, here is. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Keep It, Cricket Media show about pop culture and politics and what happens when they smack into each other at an alarming speed. I'm your host, Ira Madison III, the television writer and Fallout Boy fan. I'm Louis Fertel. I'm a TV writer and Jane Fonda historian. Let's get into it. On Saturday, the Eurovision Song Contest 2022 held its final performances in Italy, and the winner was Ukraine. It was. With the song Stefania, performed by Parappa the Rapper. <laughs> Did you know that it's the first song ever with quote-unquote hip-hop elements to win Eurovision? Which sounds like when you hear, oh, there's finally a, a female Latin cast member on SNL. Like, how is that possible? Um, <laughs> hip-hop elements. Uh, I'm using air quotes uh, because this truly was like um, – Cypress Hill esque '90s white men rapping. Um, I was gonna say elements. that is that is actually generous. I was gonna say Snow Informer. It was giving a licky boom boom <laughs> down. <laughs> uh, the UK, Spain, Sweden, and Serbia rounded out the top five. And um, let's just get this out of the way. Sure. Spain was robbed. And I have okay. had it. That, that girl was on fire. Chanel. Uh, Chanel, yeah. I have had it with um, pussy popping gay anthems getting to the top three on Eurovision and not winning. I feel the same way about Eurovision that most people allegedly feel about the Oscars, which is the thing I love never wins. Like I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, we're all we all love this, you know, gay ass pop music, right? And then gay comes in fourth, you know. I get yeah. upset. Um, and then it, you, then 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 it's this weird reminder that like straight Europeans love Eurovision too, which is sick. Yeah, and so they they're not voting. It. They're not voting for the best. Um, Chanel. Um, we should say I mean, about this the Chanel is... woman. So Spain's entry is this woman who is mostly an actress in Spain. And she, uh, of course, like maybe most Spain entries in Eurovision, is dressed in like a spangled leotard with like a light matador touch in the coat. You can picture it. And <laughs> the song itself is giving uh, Pussycat Dolls. It reminds me yeah. of uh, – it, it's like if they had a follow-up single to React, which, of course, they didn't. Yeah, um, COVID sort of killed the Pussycat Dolls, didn't it? Like right. they, 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 they like Oliver and Company. They're out in the streets. Yeah, curiosity <laughs> did not kill the Pussycat Dolls. It was COVID. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm actually friends um, with this Canadian um, pop singer Maggie um, Zabo, who wrote the song um, for oh. Chanel, and. Um, it is an anthem, and it reminds me of, you know, um, the last um, Eurovision contest, um, Eleni Faru for Cyprus, um, who had that song Fuego, if you remember yes, that great song. The gays keep getting songs to be obsessed with, and yet were denied. Toy by Netta. That was one that won. That was for us. There, there are occasions, you know, and of course, Waterloo by ABBA is the definitive Eurovision winner. Toy is good. Toy is good, but you know, it it was Israel winning Eurovision, and um, I have thoughts about it. Uh, of course, <laughs> um, Toy is a very good gay pop song, but also Toy beat Fuego. So, mm. you know, I'd rather have the Pussy Popper. Then, um, you know, the, the song with the um, message behind it, which is, yeah. I'm not your yeah. toy, not your toy oy, which, you know, <laughs> we learned about that in grade school. And I would rather have both of those <laughs> than a pussy parapper, which we just explained. <laughs> uh, 
Parappa the Rapper. What an amazing reference from PlayStation 1. (laughs) Waterloo, the lyric in it, the the finally facing my Waterloo, as in just the the idea of, uh, oh, this person I'm obsessed with is my Waterloo. It's such a sweet sentiment. It's such an all-time great um, analogy. So I think it's a good definitive winner for Eurovision to have. Sweden this year, speaking of which, uh, the girl who performed, she got in the top five or so, and her song was fine and catchy. She herself was so styled exactly Swedish and yet also was a hybrid of Julianne Huff and Kaylee Cuoco that she was exactly unmemorable. It is worth mentioning that the Sam Ryder from the UK actually topped the jury's scoreboard, um, but was overtaken by the Ukraine when the public votes were added, which this was kind of expected, to be honest. I thought Ukraine was going to win Eurovision anyway, because, I mean, they're being invaded. Also, it's not that the song is unlistenably, like, uncatchy or anything. There are good pop music elements to it, but I thought it was a very competitive year otherwise. You know, like, mm-hmm. the, the top five all stand out in certain ways. Even, like, Serbia I enjoyed. Um, so, yeah. uh, it's just, it's, it's interesting. If, if we're talking about the best of the best, it's weird that it ended up at number one. Yeah, I mean, not to be crass, but it's giving sympathy and payola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Payola, my favorite word. <laughs> this also was the year where um, they've decided that I guess they're going to start overhauling the jury vote situation next year. Because there were a bunch of votes that were um, off screen. Uh, what what always happens is that when, when the announcements come in and there are, um, you know, the 40 countries that are competing, there's always... Um, you know, a representative from that country who gets on the screen um, to say um, how many points they're awarding, like who's going to get their 12 points, right? Like Courtney Act um, represented Australia. Uh, And it's it's usually just a parade of um, people in weird outfits and fun accents. Taking too long to say hello before they get (laughs) the Um, that. By the way, I am obsessed uh, and, and I know this is probably just like um, like an American joke about how like Europeans speak, um, but I am obsessed with how, especially the announcers, like they always sort of like say a weird statement that's almost sort of a joke, but isn't really, and then they follow it up with, okay, wow, <laughs> you know, or it's like a, right. okay. No. <laughs> They almost have a quip, and then there's a long pause, and then they get to the rigmarole of the points, which always takes too fucking long. It's again, they're all getting right. Like 40 Why questions don't and we just a tally? Yeah. yeah. And so it's all right. Let's uh, get to the points. It's like all right, we could we could have <laughs> done that first. Um, but, From the country um, of Mario Kart, here is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there are several who weren't on the screen. Um, because I guess there was a scandal about countries promising to vote for one another uh, in an effort to, I don't know, like keep another country from winning, which I feel like happens every fucking year because it's Eurovision. Countries are competing against one another, and I wouldn't think that alliances between countries would vanish in the midst of a song contest. No, even though I guess, you know, spiritually that's what's supposed to happen. Like, let's just get together and love pop music and pick the best. But absolutely not. That's not what happens. Like, Greece and Cyprus are always voting for each other and stuff. I just want to say also that always somebody on Twitter will be like, what's Eurovision? Some gay guy will do that. It's, it, you can't play dumb about Eurovision anymore. We have a whole Will Ferrell movie about it. So stop pretending you haven't heard of it. It's a big... Stupid, expensive X Factor finale, and we invite Croatia. Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> uh, and we tried to replicate it this year with the American Song Contest, which oh, I did not I watch. Did. Well, that makes you anybody. <laughs> but Michael Bolton was in it. Macy Gray was in it. Yeah. Um. So, con- congrats tried. to everyone. A K-pop song won. Oh, okay, cute. Good job. And, and that's as much as I know about it. Kelly Clarkson hosted it, and listen, I, I support her. 
Um, but I largely do not know what she does with her day. Um, if you ask me what happens on the Kelly Clarkson show, I'm like, I don't know. She probably sang a cover of a pop song from three years ago uh, and then talked to somebody. That's exactly right. Um, no, b- because I'm friends with Matt Rogers, these clips are funneled to me as if I'm in a subscription <laughs> service. And not. Just yesterday, I watched Kelly Clarkson perform with Ann Wilson, uh, and Hearts Ann Wilson, and they sounded great, wonderful. They always do an abridged version of the song, which upsets me. But um, mm. Kelly Clarkson hosting this show, I'm always obsessed with somebody having a hit thing they do and then for one year they're also stuck doing this other thing that's not a hit for a while ryan seacrest hosted this game show called million second quiz where people played trivia all night you could watch it all 24 hours a day and he would host the prime time hour of it you know meanwhile he's hosting american idol too or whatever and it's just girl what are you doing and you're on with regis and kelly i don't know if he was on with regis and kelly then uh or with kelly ripa then but It's just so funny to watch somebody who's successful do something uh, contractually that is not successful. Okay, now this is going to be very um, out of character for me, um, not remembering a pop culture thing, especially one that is in such recent memory. What was that fucking quiz game that all of us were obsessed with playing? Oh, HQ. HQ. Oh, my God. The year was 2018. (laughs) (laughs) And what was it on? Just your phone. Just your phone. It wasn't, a, it wasn't like an app, a network app or something. No, like it, it, it does feel like it was developed from a game show or something, but it's not. Yeah, and then they took it, forever between questions so the host could do his, like, vaudeville shtick or whatever he was doing. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, it's time for HQ, baby! God, that game had a chokehold on us. Oh, my God. I remember watching The Rock appear on HQ. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get this show on the road. Yeah, baby. It was the original Quibi. We got everybody to agree we're going to do this thing, and then we all collectively forgot about it, and it has not been spoken of since. In fact, it's controversial that we would even bring it up. More people played a single game of this than ever watched a single thing on Quibi. That's true. Right. I remember we'd just be like at a bar. Um, in West Hollywood, or we'd be like at a party at someone's house and everyone like pauses because it's time to play this fucking game. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, you, you gathered around the one guy who knew geography in the room or whatever, AKA. Me. And then I definitely did win once, but with the amount of people who win, I, I got like, what, like $2 and 50 cents. Uh, probably less than that. It, it was insulting what you would win for <laughs> HQ. You had to basically wait up until the Sunday game or they had special events where only a few people won. Like they would play more than the allotted 12 questions or something. And uh, I, I remember there, there, there was one day that was a contest. It involved The Rock. I got to like the final 800 people or something and I would have won thousands of dollars and I lost. But I, I've won, I won several of the, the regular games they have. I probably won like 15 times. I mean, I've forgotten about it, but it was 2018. So it's, there's, there are definitely Keep It episodes where we talk about this game. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it was even my Keep It one time. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's what happens when you've been doing a show for five fucking years, okay? I don't remember what the fuck we talk about on this show. No. Uh, no uh, it, it sounds like we remember everything in pop culture, but it's our job to retain some of it and then immediately forget it for the next week. Um, speaking of Eurovision, um, America's Eurovision was this weekend, the Billboard Awards. <laughs> my favorite award show because it's not about votes it's about well Sales. have you seen the charts recently we're just gonna we're gonna put that we're gonna put an award in front of that there's always like a controversy with like uh people being like oh i wish this person would win and people being like uh, well you know it's because of sales yeah <laughs> they literally like, can tell them beforehand who won just based yeah. on what's on the chart okay you know who's not winning lord <laughs> Doja Cat's winning everything. Right. By the way, can I just say about Lord that clip of her going viral, where like someone put together a smash, uh, I was a supercut, lol, of her shushing the audience as she sings either a cappella or sings something in a concert, and they're trying to sing along, so she's shushing them. I am my mother's child. I love you too. Why don't more people in concert do that? I assume when people are singing all the words at you, you can't hear what you're singing. I'm surprised to see she's the only person to do that. 
I mean, Donna Summer said, shut up, faggot, said everyone <laughs> called her homophobic for decades. So maybe that's why people stopped doing it, Lewis. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> people really um, misinterpreted that as homophobic. It was supportive. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, shh, I can't hear the lyrics to Bad Girls, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear God, my one true ally. Yes. <laughs> Um, actually, I would say that, like, I seen Rina Sawayama in concert, like, a couple times, and, um, she does a funny bit, um, where she's like, are you ready to slay, like, at the beginning of the concert? Uh, and then, like, the audience is like, yeah, and then she goes, shh, shut the fuck up, and goes into her song, shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, that's cool. All right. Yeah. No, Madonna used to be hostile with her audiences, too. Uh, yeah, I know. She didn't turn the AC on. Right. Um, oh, that. It, it Sh- showing torture. up three hours Over late. Over the years, it became torture. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. That She's bitch like, is later. Eat, you can't know where your friends are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that, bitch is later to, that bitch is later than me to a lunch date. For her own <laughs> concerts, okay. You're just sitting there, and it was even it was even worse when she started locking up our phones, like she did for the Madame X tour. You're like, right. I don't even know what time it is. Yeah, <laughs> is it 4 a.m.? <laughs> Am I still waiting for Madonna? But um, the Billboard Awards are only uh, memorable. Truly forgot that they were happening. Um, right. They're only I feel like being talked about now because um, Megan Thee Stallion was stalked. What by happened? Cara Delevingne. Oh, Have that's you seen right. the I clips? See. First of all, Cara but, Delevingne, I understand this is what makes her a model. The resting look on her face really is demon. I mean, it's, it's just like a demon. <laughs> <laughs> I think Carrie O'Donnell tweeted that um, Cara Delevingne needs an exorcism. Yeah. I mean, I think that's just journalistically accurate. It is wild to me that this um, woman has um, had so many wild moments in like pop culture. Uh, and and still just sort of like, does she still model? Right, or act. She was in that one movie. Paper she was in Suicide Squad, which is the worst acting I've ever seen mm. in my life. Irma! She was in a relationship with Ashley Benson, um, the pretty little liar. Um, slash yes. Also, she used to play Abby Devereaux on Days of Our Lives. Um, which is why I love Ashley Benson so fondly. Uh, but they were like engaged at one point, and I remember during COVID, they were um, they were caught bringing like a um, sex swing, uh, like a sex bench into their house. Um, okay, great. Yeah, you know, naughty lesbians. Um, but I um, instinctively root for any woman who brings me Christina Ricci eyes because uh-huh. she was so formative to me, and I believe in that. You know, resting angst which is important in actresses. I feel like we haven't had as much of that recently. But yeah. the, the, the thing that went viral, which is her standing around a corner peering at Megan the Stallion and then later sitting behind her during the sitting show. Next sitting, next, was, sitting next to so, her. Sitting next to her. So she's peering around the corner like on the red carpet at Megan. And then she comes and like grabs the train of her dress and is throwing it up in the air. I guess so the photos look better. It also wasn't clear whether or not she came with Megan as her plus one. Yeah, which that's an which, interesting duo. Which I think maybe she did. And then she was like, oh, no, this bitch is crazy. Because the, the, the wildest part of the video is uh, when they're sitting next to each other and, like, Megan's having a conversation with Doja Cat, who's sitting in front of her, and then Kara pops into frame. Right. And you can hear Doja Cat say, like, her, that woman's full government name. She's like, oh, my God. Hi, Kara Delevingne. Oh, my God. Hi, Kara <laughs> Which is how you address someone where you are absolutely terrified by yeah. their presence. It's a fearful reaction. Yeah. <laughs> and of uh, course, Kara is darting her neck out in that, like, uh, you know, uh, 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 attentive alley cat way. <laughs> and she, um, there's also video of her, like, crawling on the floor, taking, like, um, angled photos of Doja and the people that she's with. I'm just like, this woman was slithering all over the Billboard Music Awards. And it reminded me of um, last Halloween um, in New York when I went to um, this party thrown by the Misshapes um, at the box. Um, It was um, 
Azealia Banks was one of the hosts of it, and she performed on stage. Um, and Cara Delevingne appeared on stage wasted, taking like a mic, like trying to sing along the two one two. Didn't know the words. And then started like a song that is lick- very wordy. Yes, and then <laughs> and then started licking like Azalea's boots. That's too bad. Uh, Azalea bad. Banks doesn't deserve that. She is the poet laureate of our generation. Right. Yes, uh, and one of the few I would say intimidating celebrities. They're just. I love people. her, Megan. Megan Fox. I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> I love how she's, I mean, I love how she sends just, like, white gays into a tizzy. Whenever you try to have an argument yeah. with, like, a certain type of white gay about her, it's always, um, she called us the KKK. And I'm like, she said the LGBT community, in parentheses, GGGG, are like the gay white KKKs. Get them some pink hoods and unicorns and let them rally down Rodeo Drive. How can you not <laughs> cackle at that? Also, I can just picture it. I mean, it's a, it's a vivid image. To be insulted by Azalea Banks is a gift. To be like in the list mm-hmm. of like um, beefs that uh, Azalea Banks has is truly a gift. Uh, and I'm honestly, you know, kind of sad that like um, the the reason that she blocked me on Instagram um, isn't public knowledge. Right. We uh, talked about her on this show once, and she DM'd me and was like, um, aren't you that faggot who was talking to m- talking about me on your podcast? Uh, in parentheses, the brokest form of media, which <laughs> is funny. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not the richest form. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, you, you do have to root for, honestly, any celebrity who is – extemporaneously super funny and not copying anyone. It's not contrived. Like, like her sense of humor is very ingrained in her. And even though it's extremely rowdy, that's also what makes it interesting. I don't know. It's just it, like she has a real point of view is what I'm saying. So you yeah. can't not root for that, I guess. She, I mean, is, of course, a bit messy. And, of course, I think still has zero albums. But I uh, root for her. I root for her. I don't care if you call me a nobody, Azalea Banks. I am a nobody. On the brokenest right. form of media. Unblock <laughs> the me. Form of media. <laughs> Unblock me. <laughs> <laughs>